Okay, this is going to be a video on uh, graphing transformations and finding domain range increasing and decreasing on that. Okay, so um, here is a uh, square root function. Okay, my new anchor point will be three, six. So that's the first thing you wanna find. So three over, six up, that would be my anchor point. Okay, now I'm using the parent function of the square root. Okay, we talked about this in the last video that basically um, we only can use one and four. The negative one and negative uh, two, all right, we know can't be used, and two and three produce a square root, uh, a, a decimal. So the square root of one is one, the square root of four is two, okay? Now, there is one other thing we have to account for. This one half outside, we have to multiply all our y values by one half, so that means one half, that's now one, so these don't matter anymore, okay? So what I'm concerned with is this and this, okay? So what does this mean? From this anchor point, I go one right, one half up. From this, four one means from the anchor point, one, two, three, four, up one, okay? All right, now, I wanna find the domain, the range, the increase and the decrease, okay? So I wanna label my anchor point. That is going to help. I want to label my arrows. That is infinity, infinity, okay? So my domain, smallest x value would be three. Biggest one would be infinity, okay? My range, my smallest y value is six. My biggest one is infinity. Now, if I start from the far left here of the graph, all there is is an increase, okay? So it's going to increase from three to infinity. Once again, I'm not picky on the brackets for increasing, decreasing. There is no decrease for this problem, okay? All right, we got an absolute value. My anchor point, there is nothing inside. That would be a three on the outside. So zero over, three up, okay? Now, I am using absolute value as my parent function. Okay, so I'm using one, two, negative one, negative two. So absolute value of one is one, absolute value of two is two, absolute value of negative one is one, absolute value of negative two is two. The values don't change, okay? All right, We're going, the anchor point helps move it. Now this part right here, I'm going to multiply all my y's by negative four, okay? So that's negative four, negative eight, negative four, negative eight. So what I'm graphing are these points, okay? So what does this mean? One over from the anchor point, one, two, three, four down. Two over from the anchor point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight down, okay? One left from the anchor point, four down. Two left, eight down. So this is what the graph looks like. What's convenient is if you use the same ones every time, the points end up being the same. Now, to find the domain, range, increase, and decrease, okay, anchor point is labeled, arrows are labeled, negative infinity, negative infinity, positive negative, okay? Smallest x value is negative infinity of those three, biggest would be positive, okay? My range, my smallest y value is negative infinity, the biggest will happen to be three, okay? So the increase, decrease, I would start from here, and all I care about are those X's now, all right? Increase, boom, decrease. So it is increasing from negative infinity to zero. It is decreasing from zero to infinity, okay? Now, for the step function, I'm not gonna worry about domain and range. We're just going to graph it, okay? So my anchor point is negative two, negative one. So negative two over, negative one down, okay? So I'm still using one, two, negative one, negative two. Step function is easy. One, two, negative one, negative two, okay? So this means I go right one, up one. This means right two, up two. Well, oh, actually, sorry, hold on. Let me erase that. All right, I've got the anchor point. Now, we have this three in front. So we're gonna multiply all of these values by three. So I'm just getting ahead of myself. Three, six, negative three, negative six. So I'm graphing this. 
So once again, this is not these coordinates. This is how you move from the anchor point. So one over, one, two, three up, two over, uh, I think six up would be here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. One left, three down, two left, one, two, three, four, five, and six down. Okay. All right. Now, my steps, this is very important. My step always looks like this. So I will draw this over till I get to this point and put an open circle. Draw, open circle, draw, open circle, draw, open circle, draw, open circle. So you go all the way to the next line. Once again, we are not going to worry about the domain and range for the step function. Okay? Rational function. My anchor point would be 4, and it will be negative 5. Opposite, follow. So 4 over, negative 5 down is here. Now this is a little bit different. I want to put my asymptotes through these points. Okay, that's the difference with the rational. So what I got here is I'm still using 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, and I'm using the 1 over x as my parent function. So 1 over 1 would be 1, 1 over 2 would be 0.5, 1 over negative 1 would be negative 1, 1 over negative 2 would be negative 0.5. Okay, so from this anchor point, 1 right, 1 up, 2 right, a half up, 1 left, one down, two left, a half down. So this is what I got here. Okay, now your arrows can be slightly confusing with domain and range. Let me explain. An increase and decrease, okay? For domain, this left arrow would be left arrow and it is getting flat at y is negative five. We talked about this in the last unit. This one would be my positive infinity getting flat at negative five, okay? Now, so the domain, okay, your smallest x value, okay? All right, so for the, for the domain for this, all right, this is gonna be, I think it's easier to do set builder notation. X is an element of all real numbers, but X can't be um, uh, my X coordinate, which is going to be four, okay? All right. My range is an element of all real numbers, except y can't be, uh, in this case, negative five. Okay, all right? Now, here's the simplest way I would say to do increasing, decreasing. As you can see here, this anchor point is four negative five, okay? Now, we only care about the x values, okay? So here's what's basically happening, all right? If I start from the left, this is going and then it just drops off. So this would be considered a decrease. So it's decreasing from negative infinity till it gets to my anchor point of four. So it's decreasing from negative infinity to four, okay? Then what happens is it jumps up at four and then decreases again, okay? So this would be decreasing again from four to infinity. So this would be none. And I know that looks weird, but if you trace that, that eventually falls off. Okay, you trace that also, that also falls off, all right? So that's why both of those would be considered uh, decreases, okay? So what I would like you to do is I would like you to graph, okay? And I would like you to also find the domain range increasing and decreasing for uh, five, six, and eight. We will not worry about the domain and range for that. I want you to graph all of them, pause your video, graph all of them, but only find the domain and range for five, six, and eight. Okay? Unpause your video. I'm going to go ahead and go through. Uh, there we go. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and go through these. Okay? All right? <clears throat> so I got an anchor point of negative two, negative one. Okay, I'm going to use x and y, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. My parent function is x cubed, 1, 2 cubed would be 8, negative 1 cubed would be negative 1, negative 2 would be negative 8. Okay, all right, there's no number out front, so I can leave those. 1 right, 1 up, 2 right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 up. Okay, 1 left, 1 down, 2 left, 
All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's what your graph looks like. Okay, my anchor point is negative two, negative one. This would be negative infinity, negative. This would be positive infinity, positive, okay? So my domain, my smallest x value would be negative infinity. The biggest would be positive. My range, the smallest is negative infinity. The biggest is positive. For the increasing, decreasing, this just, if I start from here, this increases the whole way. So this is gonna increase from negative infinity to positive, and the decrease would be none, okay? So at this turn, it never actually drops off. It just keeps on going uh, vertically from there, okay? All right, uh, number six here, my anchor point. The only thing inside would be three. There is nothing outside. So I got three, zero, okay? For square root, we've talked about this already. We're just gonna have one and four here. Okay, so regular square root of one is one, square root of four is two, okay? This value gets multiplied by the outside. So negative two, negative four. So from this anchor point, one right, two down. One, two, three, four right. One, two, three, four down, okay? All right, so if I label my anchor point three, zero, this would be infinity, negative infinity. Okay, all right, so my domain, my smallest x value is three, my biggest x value is infinity. My range, my smallest y value, be careful, is in negative infinity, my biggest one is zero, okay? Increase and decrease. So this one, I would start from here, this decreases the whole way from three to infinity, there is no increase on that problem, okay? Okay, question seven, this is a step function. My anchor point here, there's nothing inside, would be zero, and then it would be two. So zero, two, okay? I've got my x, my y, my step function's really easy. Uh, that's gonna be one, one, two, two, negative one, negative one, negative two, negative two. Since I have the four there, I multiply all those values by four. So one, four, two, eight, Negative one, negative four, negative two, negative eight. So from here, one over, one, two, three, four up. Two over, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? One left, one, two, three, four down. Two left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Once again, I'm drawing my steps over to the next line, and I'm just putting an open circle. Okay, we're not gonna do domain and range for that. All right, and then this last question, okay? My anchor point is negative six of three. So negative six over, three up. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. I'm gonna label my anchor point, because I think that's going to help me, okay? So I'm doing the rational function. So one over x, one, two, negative one, negative two. One over one is one, one over two is a half. This would be negative one, negative a half. So from here, one over, one up, two over, a half, one left, one down, two left, half down. So this is what I got, okay? So for the domain, okay, all right? So with the rational, the, this is the concept is negative infinity, this is leveling at three, this is um, uh, positive infinity, it is leveling at three. So for the domain, all right, this is gonna be all real numbers, except x can't be negative six. For my range, it's an element of all real numbers, but my y can't be three, okay? All right, if you wanna do the interval notation for that, it would just be uh, negative infinity to negative six, union negative six to infinity. If you wanna do the interval notation for that, it's negative infinity to three, union three to infinity, okay? My increase and my decrease, okay? So if I start here, boom, decrease, boom, decrease. So how is that decreasing, okay? I'm gonna go from negative infinity to negative six. All right, union from six to infinity. All right, looks pretty similar, all right, to the domain actually when you do the interval notation. That might be something that can help you on that problem, okay? All right, so here's the last thing we're gonna go over. A quadratic with the absolute value, okay? Now we handled the anchor point just like we normally would, okay? 
All right, three, negative four. Three over, negative four down, okay? Still handle the table like I normally would. One, two, negative one, negative two. That's one, uh, so I'm using x squared. So one, two, I'm sorry, one squared would be one. Two squared would be four. Negative one squared would be one. Negative two squared would be four, okay? All right, so here's how you graph that. From here, okay? All right, we go one over, one up, two over, one, two, three, four up, okay? One left, one up, two left, this up. Now, what we would normally have, okay, is I would have, I'm gonna do dashes for a reason. We would have something that looks like this, okay? So here is the concept of absolute, this, this sort of crazy function. Basically, move anything below the y-axis above the x-axis, okay? So if you see how these two points are below here, uh, one of them is at um, 2, 1, 2, 3. That's at, at 2, negative 3, and this other one's at 4, negative 3. So what I'm actually going, and, and then I ha also have my anchor point at 3, negative 4. So any points below the x-axis, I'm sort of going to reflect them. So this point now is going to be at two, three. So two over three up, okay? This point will be at three, four. Three over one, two, three, four up. And this point will be at four, three as well. So what my real graph, and I'm gonna darken that in, would now look like, would now look like this. Okay, so all it's basically doing is taking the points that are below and reflecting them. So that's how you would do that problem, all right? So I would like you guys to pause your video and go ahead and work on this one. Okay, let's unpause, all right? So what I got here is my anchor point is negative one, negative three, negative one, negative three. I have a quadratic. This is what this would look like. All right, I would go one, one, uh, two, four, uh, one, one, negative one, one, negative uh, two, positive four. So what I normally have would be this, okay? So all I gotta do with this sort of crazy absolute value function is I'm gonna take these points that are below, which that point would be uh, negative two, um, negative two, this point would be zero, negative two, and I already know my anchor point is negative one, negative three, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this negative two over, okay, two up. I'm gonna make this negative one over three up and zero over this. So this part that I darken in is actually what my graph would look like. So it basically just takes this part that's below and flips it up, okay? So that's going to be the second lesson uh, on graphing transformations.